Hello there. Um, I think we're live and um, welcome to Hills Road Open Evening uh, Psychology Department. Um, unfortunately, we have to do it this way uh, rather than you looking around the department. We'd much rather see you and say hello. Um, my name is Simon Valentine. I'm one of the psychology teachers in the department of six teachers. I'm joined by one of them tonight, uh, Richard Shepherd. Uh, hopefully you can see him in the camera. And um, we're also joined by two students, Bryony and Jula. And uh, towards the end of the, or the halfway through the session, I'm going to invite them to tell you a bit about themselves and to answer any questions. Or between the, the four of us, we'll try and answer all the questions you've got. So, um, just to introduce um, some of the background to the psychology course and what you've been doing. Um, one of the most popular questions is, what is psychology? It's the science of mind and behaviour. Um, very much uh, a focus on it being a scientific discipline. Um, and it has really grown um, massively, in, certainly in the last century, and is now considered to be a uh, scientific discipline. Um, and on the course, you will learn really how the course, how the um, how psychology has developed um, over time, and um, what it's, you know sort of the main uh, theories and studies that have been um, developed during that time. So just to go through some of the course content, um, you obviously it's a two-year course. In year twelve, you start studying some of the unit one. Uh, material. So social influence is all about the, that's, you know, what a lot of um, students think that all of psychology is about, um, why we are influenced by other people, uh, why we conform to group uh, behaviour. Um, we also look at obedience and why we obey, obey orders, sometimes mindlessly. Um, why some people, why and how some people resist those influences. Not everybody is uh, conforming or obedient to the same degree. So we ask questions about why that might be. Um, and um, memory topic, um, looking at different, we would just ask the question as to what, what how do we think memory sort of, in a sense, uh, works, models of how we think memory um, uh, works in our brains. So without looking at the actual neural side of it, just looking at, at how we think it works in, the, in our brains. Um, and looking at memory in real life contexts, like um, when eyewitnesses give evidence in court, um, to what extent can we rely, rely on their memory? Um, what problems are there? So the other side of memory is forgetting. Um, and uh, looking at how, that how research in this area has led to real life developments like police interviewing techniques. Um, attachment is the uh, topic where we look at um, the, the emotional attachment between carers and babies and ask questions like, what is it that causes that attachment? Or what is the nature of that attachment? Um, and also to look at what psychologists have, have been interested in, what, um, what happens if it goes wrong? What happens if you don't form attachments with a specific carer in early life? Um, what might be the long-term consequences of that? Um, psychopathology, again, is one that, uh, a, a topic that a lot of students would be looking forward to because um, we start looking at atypical behavior. Um, in, in looking at the realms of mental illness. Um, and you take, you look at various ways of understanding and explaining um, behaviors, such as um, a biological perspective, looking at the sort of neural uh, and physiological um, side, as opposed to um, a more behavioral look at, um, you know, what, what is it that might have driven or caused these behaviors to occur. And the three, areas that we look at are OCD, that's obsessive compulsive disorder, phobias and depression. So just to reflect on an example of one experiment you might come across. 
If I showed you that and asked you the question of the three lines A, B and C, which is X the same length as? And you probably just said to yourself B. But if, what if I, if I told you that you were basically that red dot uh, there and you, there were going to be five people before you who out loud and in public in front of everybody had all said that it was C. Uh, how would that make you feel? You can probably imagine that there'd be a certain level of um, anxiety. And that's the pressure of conformity. That is the pressure of social influence. And Ash found that actually more often than you would expect, people did respond according to what the majority of other people had said. And so we ask questions about what causes that level of conformity um, and how can people uh, resist it. Looking at um, some of the course that spans both of the years, so that all of the topics so far you study in year 12, um, these three we introduce in year 12, but also um, continue to look at in year 13. This is from unit two of the exam, biopsychology. Um, a lot of students have, uh, a lo have some level of anxiety about the amount of scientific content. And with the biopsychology, there is some element of scientific um, content because you look at the brain in terms of just some basic structures in the brain basic regions and what they do, what they're responsible for, um, looking at um, just fairly briefly at how the brain uh, manages to um, change and recover uh, after some kind of trauma or injury, uh, looking at methods of uh, studying the brain and putting that sort of um, knowledge into real life uh, settings such as um, our sleep-wake cycle and other bodily rhythms and understanding um, the, uh, um, the rhythms of our lives. Um, the approaches uh, topic is really standing back from all of this material and looking at um, the big perspectives there are. So do we, should we understand behaviour from a biological perspective, very much looking at the brain and nervous system and genes, or should we look at it from a cognitive perspective, which is just understanding how uh, the brain is processing information? Um, should we take a psychodynamic approach, which would be to look at early childhood and how that has shaped us? Um, the research methods, again, spans the whole course because um, that's really learning the fundamentals of research that underpins everything that you study, all of the theories and studies that you learn about um, have had in common the research methods um, that psychologists use. So you learn about um, different types of methods, how to handle data, um, not too for taxing, it's not too difficult mathematically. Um, ethical issues, the um, what we how should, we should protect participants that are involved in research. Um, and really understanding the science of the scientific process of psychology. Just going back to the biopsychology, um, one example you'll come across is the example of Phineas Gage, who um, in, right back in 1948 um, was responsible for, he was working on railways and his job was to pack explosives to do some controlled explosions. Um, that big pole in his left hand is called a tamping iron and he actually tamped it too vigorously and um, set off the charge and that pole uh, then was blown straight up um, through his cheek you can see on the uh, skeleton there through his cheek and out through the top of his head taking most of his um, uh, the, the, uh, the, skull, the skull from the front of his head with it and it was one of the earliest recorded cases of um, how um, we've learned that the brain is extremely good at uh, recovering from trauma and injury because he not only lived, but he um, regained most of his uh, faculties. He was um, perfectly well functioning and he still held down a job. 
So it was uh, an early indication of what we call brain plasticity, its, its ability to actually rewire and, and make new connections. And so you'll look at that case study on the course and its significance. Um, in year 13, you focus more on the unit three material, so looking at relationships, um, again, asking questions like, what is it that causes relationships to, um, to develop? Why do we need romantic relationships? Um, relationships in different spheres of life, such as um, virtual relationships, uh, online dating, um, and how we can form relationships with people that we don't ever meet, like um, personalities and, and actors and fictional characters on TV. So just asking questions about why that might happen. Um, the evolved partner preferences is asking questions about, are there evolutionary reasons why we need to form romantic relationships. Schizophrenia um, is one of the focuses of um, the, uh, the particular mental illness that we uh, decide to study. Um, so you start right from learning the symptoms of schizophrenia um, and how it's diagnosed, what characterizes schizophrenia, and looking at various angles on um, uh, what causes schizophrenia, asking questions about um, can we actually identify individual causes or is it more of a uh, collection of lots of different uh, factors which might, might cause schizophrenia, which in fact is the answer by the way. Um, there are genes involved, there are environmental experiences involved, so we ask questions about um, which of those influences uh, are more um, important. In the forensic um, topic, you will learn about um, offender profiling, how a pro offender profiling actually works in real life as opposed to what you've seen on TV. Um, measuring um, how we, how we uh, measure and uh, explain criminal behavior. Um, and what is the best way to deal with criminal behavior uh, in the criminal justice system and afterwards. And um, again, in the sort of wider perspective, looking at some of the debates and issues uh, surrounding psychology, such as um, is there, has there been a bias in research to date, um, focusing on gender and culture bias, and how that might have um, subtly changed our view of, of behavior uh, and what's normal and abnormal. Um, nature nurture debate, whether we think that um, we are more a product of our genes uh, or our environment. Um, and uh, ethical implications, looking at psychology in the, in the sort of real world as to whether we should be studying certain topics or not. And the sort of social responsibility that psychologists have when they're studying areas which are potentially um, difficult. Um, so yeah, just going back to the schizophrenia topic, um, looking at some of the symptoms, um, hallucinations, one of the positive symptoms is hallucinations, which can be um, auditory, hearing voices would be the most common. Um, and psychologists think that um, one of the cognitive reasons for that or neural reasons in the brain is that um, people with that symptom are failing to distinguish between their own internal voice and um, what would be an external voice. Visual hallucinations as well. Um, delusional thinking, um, which often is fear of persecution, some kind of paranoia. It can be uh, delusions of grandeur as well. Anything which, uh, any thoughts we have which don't actually have any evidence as being based in reality. Um, sometimes feeling of being controlled by external voices. Um, sometimes schizophrenia is characterized by more uh, what they call negative symptoms, like a lack of emotional response to things, and sometimes an actual physical lack of responsiveness to any stimulus. Um, and one th myth that we'll dispel is that uh, schizophrenia is not uh, what used to be called split personality disorder. It doesn't involve multiple personalities, that's a separate. Uh, disorder. So I'm going to um, 
pass over now to uh, Richard Shepherd, who can talk about um, a bit more about the what we do on the course. Hello, my name's Richard Shepherd. I'm another of the psychology teachers here, and I'll talk to you from here. So um, you'll be wanting to know what grades are required. We're looking for grade sixes in one of the Englishes and maths or science. And that's because the subject of psychology and doing well in this subject is about blending together the different skills of having a rigorous scientific attitude and being able to put it into words in writing well. So uh, if you don't have uh, as high a uh, level skill on one of those sides or the other, then you'll pick that up in the course and uh, through becoming better at uh, understanding these theories, you'll bring together the science and expressing it in fluid essays. It is a science. Uh, Simon was talking about the method side of the course and that's very important. And together with the rigor in the theories and being able to back them up with evidence, you'll be able to develop good scientific essays. Written well, written concisely, and you'll also carry out research. You'll collect your own data, sometimes from people at home, uh, sometimes from people in the class, or the teacher will demonstrate how a study was done with a quick splitting of the class into two halves, for example, and giving one half of the class a slightly different task to the other half and showing what effect that has. We expect five hours of independent work beyond the classroom contact time, and that will be homework, which takes the form of what we call flipped learning. That means you prepare for the next lesson at home, learning the basics and finding your way around the topic. And then in the class, you can go into greater depth and go to higher level skills with the teacher and the classmates you have then. So in the class, after the preparation of your flipped learning and whatever material that you've learnt about, you'll then talk about those theories, that evidence, the issues that have been raised, and uh, together with uh, other tasks, uh, quizzes and um, uh, pair group, pair or group work, uh, you'll have a variety of different things to do in the class. Exam questions, of course, are important. We train you to develop the skills in a systematic way to write better answers from the short answers, which may be only describing something up to much longer discussion questions. Eventually comparing the different approaches that Simon was talking about. We have lots of support. Teachers provide lunchtime workshops where you can meet or uh, go online to speak to a teacher. If you have particular questions or you want to recap something you didn't quite understand in the first instance, there's a, a longer, uh, a longer um, involvement mentoring scheme as well that you might like to join and meet with one of the upper sixth who's already been through the course in your lower sixth, and they can tell you how they dealt with some of the issues that perhaps you were finding tricky. There are lots of resources online in a quiz compendium and uh, paper versions of uh, short answer quizzes as well that you can test yourself with or uh, a, co uh, 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 a classmate or Maybe a family member can talk you through them. We have a textbook that we ask the students to buy, and that's provided online as well in a digital version where there's more links to click on, extra curricular websites to browse and YouTubes to watch and other interactive quizzes there. And uh, materials from every lesson, the presentations and the 
documents or the pictures or what we've used are available on our SharePoint site. So this is a repository of all the materials from each of the topics that you were hearing about earlier. Behind each of these icons is a list of lesson folders where all the materials are filed. So if you are absent from a lesson, you can go and find the materials ahead of time if you know you're going to be away, a sports fixture perhaps, or um, some other commitment, a field trip. You can get ahead with the work or if you've um, missed a lesson for unexpected reasons, you can go back and find the materials there. Extracurricular, talking of, there are trips we run, uh, one to the Bethlehem Psychiatric Hospital, uh, where there's an on-site museum. And uh, people come in and talk. Speakers come in from the University of Cambridge and elsewhere to give lunchtime talks where possible to rooms of uh, students at lunchtime. That's organised by the Psychology Society. Uh, there will be other events they put on as well. And a good community that you can join. So where can a Psychology A-Level take you? Well, it can take you to many places with uh, a wide variety of applications. The students that we take in come from all sorts of other subjects. It's a subject that goes well with every other subject. We have students from all across the subject range. The sciences, the arts and the humanities. And students go on into those fields and into psychology, many where they hadn't expected to go and do a psychology degree. Psychology degrees may, in the top tier of universities, require a science or possibly two specified, but very often no specifications are made. Results, 71% getting a B or above in the last three years on average nearly everybody passing. And uh, courses taken at university from the wide range of students that come in to a wide range of ongoing higher education. The essays that you write in psychology are good training for many of these subjects. But we also have some students going on to do sciences as well. Okay, so these presentations are going to be uploaded to the website. We have time now for our students to speak a little about their experience and we'll invite them to say a few words about how they found the course and what they've enjoyed on the course. So if I can hand over now to one of our students. There's Jula. Hi, I, I'm Jula. I'm a second year psychology student at Hills. Um, so some basic information. I take maths, chemistry, biology and psychology. And um, I'm talk I, I want to talk about how what it's like and why you should choose it. How I learn it, how it's different to GCSEs, and some fun things I've done. So, um, like the lessons itself are, are really good. Like all the topics are very interesting, and you you you'll start to notice that it explains a lot. A lot of like behavior around you. You're like, oh, that's why. Um, so it's quite comforting in that sense because you understand people better. Uh, you should choose it because it's basically useful for everything. Um, if it's not useful for the for your career, it's useful for your personal life. Um, but it's probably useful for the career, for your career, because you'll 
likely be engaging with others and um, and like seeing customers or patients, etc. Um, how I learned it, it's quite different to GCSC. I didn't take GCSC psychology, but I, I took three humanities and um, triple science. Um, it's more of a, I blend the two approaches. So I do a lot of essay plans, um, try to do them off by memory and then fill in the gaps in my knowledge. The key to revision is to understand what you don't know instead of what you do know. And I also do a lot of flashcards to ensure I get like the tiny little details all correct. Um, it's different to GCSE because it is, it is more intense, <laughs> um, obviously, because you take uh, three or four subjects at A-levels and you take 10 at GCSE. Um, but it's also a lot, a lot better than GCSEs. You go into things in more detail, you cover a, a wider a range of things. And um, yeah, and you get to be around people who are also really interested in the subject. So uh, there aren't people like messing around or anything in class, which is fantastic. Um, some cool things I've done. Uh, so aside from like practical work, we do experiments on uh, like people. Um, there are loads of opportunities that psychology has sent. Uh, firstly, the Psychology Society. And if you take part, you can join some of the talks. Uh, you'll have like academics coming in. So people talking about like in detail their area of psychology that they enjoy. And you can also have uh, like people who are currently practicing. So like clinical psychologists. And we last year we had a um, psychologist, an adolescent psychologist come in and talk about her experience too. Um, also in psychology society, um, they provide, they send you links to different opportunities. There's this thing called the Brain Bee competition um, that it's ad advertised and I took part on. It's where you learn neuroscience. There's a lot of psychology that, you, um, that there's to learn for that competition as well. So that's very good. And um, you constantly get emails from the department with many, many opportunities. Like I took part in uh, scientific research, which is great. Um, so yeah, it's <laughs> my section. Thanks, Julia. Is Bryony there? Maybe lost her. <laughs> well, um, okay, well, it, it, unless she comes in soon, should we uh, try and answer some questions? Um, we can't answer everyone's questions. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there are a lot there, but um, we'll try and get through some of the main ones. Um, guest 936 has said, would you be set back if you haven't done GCSE psychology? Um, uh, and Judah, I mean, you've almost answered that already, but what, what would you say indirectly in, in relation to that? Uh, definitely not. Um, uh, like I didn't take it. <laughs> personally and you can yeah you get things that are very very good in class as well so i would not worry about that in gcc psychology the majority of the value is having the gcse uh brian do you want to um just fairly briefly um sort of introduce yourself and say what you're doing yes hello sorry um yeah i'm i'm Bryony. Uh, I also study psychology, obviously. Um, I study history and sociology, so I'm essentially at the opposite end of the spectrum to Jula. Um, but I also really enjoy psychology. It was the only subject that I was absolutely certain I wanted to do when I applied to go to Hills, and it is absolutely a decision that I would choose again, because if you are a person who's always been fascinated by human behaviour, why we do the things we do when they sometimes just don't seem right um, and how we acquired those behaviours, psychology is absolutely the study for you. Um, I'd really say it's a topic for everybody because it's got, um, there's so much variation in terms of what we study. We look at social in influence, which I found fascinating. We look at biopsychology and like Miss Shepherd and Juliana said, you're really combining a lot of different skills. Um, if I was going to compare it to GCSE subjects, I'd say maybe it's kind of a split between GCSE science and GCSE, GCSE RE in the sense that you get to describe some very quite abstract um, theories in a very clear and concise way. And 
that means it does take you a bit of time to learn how to revise effectively and how to learn. But once you've learned that, it's it's a combination between essay plans, flashcards, just a lot of self-testing. But once you've learned that, it will be useful for every area in your academic life and as well in your personal life. Um, I would say, I please don't worry too much about you know it's something being too sciencey or too mathsy for you um i science and maths absolutely were not my strong point at gcse and i have transitioned pretty pretty smoothly into the science topic it does seem very daunting you know i remember when i started just the word neuron terrified me but it really isn't as difficult as it seems and i think you really will enjoy it um I really, my favourite bit about psychology is um, kind of the homework because I love, I love the way that you can go and learn the things for your lessons beforehand and then you can research in part of your independent learning the things you found most interesting about the topic. There's always an extension task which you can do if you find interesting. Alternatively, you will get exactly what you need out of the homework, so it's up to you. Um, Sometimes you get to do a bit of an experiment on your family, which is very fun, um, so long as they agree. Um, consent is very important in psychology. Um, so yeah, I would just say, oh yeah, and the best thing about psychology is because your teacher teachers are psychology teachers, they are at the forefront of knowing exactly what learning is effective, um, you know, you know we look at we've looked at studies that show how self-testing is really important and I think having that knowledge has really given me and my other classmates a bit of an edge against my other contemporaries who aren't taking psychology and also you are never going to be bored in a psychology lesson because there is always some interactive work sometimes you get to participate in experiments sometimes you get to conduct them the teachers are very aware that just taking notes off a PowerPoint for an hour or two hours now is not productive and is not effective. So they always incorporate lots of different tasks that keep the lessons nice and dynamic. So, yeah, that's about it from me. Um, choose psychology. You will not regret it. So, uh, then, uh, going back, you mentioned that. Um, one of the most common questions is, is there a lot of maths involved? Um, fairly briefly, what would you say? Um, not really. Uh, you tend to learn more mathsy stuff in year two instead of year one. So you build up your confidence in the subject a lot and you build up your confidence in your ability to do science. Um, I think Brian is probably better at answering this question considering I take maths. <laughs> Ah, yeah, so you're very comfortable with it. Brian, yes, yes. As a sort of more humanities based uh, person, have you found the maths difficult? Um, no, not really, um, because it's a lot of statistics. You're interpreting data a lot. So um, most of the maths you do is it comes with cues. So things like percentages, um, we look at things called statistical tests in which we um, measure whether or not the results of an experiment are significant um, you're never going to be asked to actually do a really big calculation you're never going to have to use a formula there's no memory there's no memorizing of formulas that never happens it's essentially looking at percentages and interpreting mm -hmm. interpreting data and the odd graph or two which actually can be quite fun yeah. I would um, ten percent of the marks involve maths but it isn't as Bryony says difficult maths it is just processing the right figures from the right tables or uh, picking off the right numbers from a chart um, so not hard not difficult maths at all um the um Marion was asked quite a popular question which is how many students are there in each batch or in each lesson um on average we have around 22 to 23 students in each uh, classroom. So that's really good for uh, being able to do a lot of variation from individual work right through to uh, whole class feedback and everything in between. 
Um, what subjects, Mariam has also asked, what subjects work best alongside A-level psychology? Uh, I think you've, we've heard from our two students there as to what they're doing and they're quite uh, different. Um, what would you two say about other people that you know that are doing psychology? Is there any particular pattern as to what other subjects seem to go well with it? Um, I would personally say that science uh, does as well. Like it's it's complemented uh, science very well. There's a bit of biopsychology that overlaps um, that overlaps with uh, biology as well. So it's very useful. Uh, I think some of the things we talk about briefly in maths as well. Um, yeah, so I think for me it, it goes well with science. Yeah, for me, um, I know a lot of people who take sociology as well as psychology and there is quite a bit of overlap in terms of the topics you study. For example, I'm, I'm studying um, reasons behind crime in psychology and sociology at the moment. So I think whatever you choose, essentially, it will go well with psychology because it's such a it's such an adaptive subject. Okay, thank you. Lucy, what jobs do you need to? Um, the answer is sort of, uh, you know, um, innumerable jobs, really. The, 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 the psychology A level course uh, has lots of transferable skills because you're learning skills of, for example, um, sort of uh, logical thought, rationally thinking through the nature of what, what a theory is and how it, we can apply it to, to situations. Um, you've got skills of condensing those thoughts and those ideas to very, very concise language. It's not a very uh, wordy uh, kind of um, essay based subject. It's more scientific. You will write essays, but they need to be quite brief and concise. Um, you've got uh, skills of, um, of analysis, skills of uh, even statistical analysis. So you end up with very, very transferable skills from the course and um, you, there are a whole host of, if you go down the actual psychology route, get a psychology degree and a master's or PhD, you can go on to be a psychologist. You can then work in clinical work in the sort of health uh, sector, um, right through to uh, occupational um, uh, psychology, dealing with people recovering from uh, trauma and injury, um, industrial psychology, uh, look, you know, helping um, businesses make decisions. So there's a whole host of different jobs. And as I say, in the current, current uh, climate as well, really not many degrees lead on to a specific career, but you do end up with, certainly from the A-level and from the degree, with lots of good skills. Um, Tatiana's saying, how similar is this to criminology? Um, I don't know, Richard, do you have much knowledge of criminology A-level? Um, I did almost apply to do criminology. Um, I, it, I don't think it's, in terms of course structure, I think criminology is, would be closer to sociology. Hills Road doesn't offer a criminology course, but if you wanted to do something similar, I would go for, I think sociology is more similar. We do have a forensics mm -hmm. topic where we look at crime though and that's really interesting uh, yeah um, i don't think technology is also good to compare like the two okay i found it difficult to hear you then Jude. i'm not sure if that was your microphone going a bit funny um <laughs> can you uh, hear me now yes that's clear yeah yeah um, is there any coursework for psychology? Uh, straight answer is no, uh, it's all exam based. Um, but you learn all the skills of doing practical psychology whilst you're doing the course. Um, Poppy has asked, is there a lot of content to learn? Uh, Richard, what would you say? I'd say yes, there's a fair amount, um, but it's about being selective and you don't need to know everything that's in the book if you can answer the questions with some of the material in the book and, and go into greater depth than uh, developing your arguments or making links across to different points uh, is often better than 
just putting down more and more content. So it's about developing deep arguments um, and not uh, a, a, a mass of superficial. I think um, I'll, I'll sort of throw this your way, Julia and Brian. I, I think a lot of students are surprised by the amount of content there is on the course. Um, maybe the, the perception before the course is that it's very much about ideas and uh, and you know feelings. And uh, were you surprised by the amount of content you had to learn? Um, I think a lot of we did here in the first couple of weeks, you know, another study, really. But as you go along, you get used to it and you, you just need to remember you don't. Um, there are named studies which you can be asked specific exam questions on, for example, ASH um, with the lines with, that we looked at earlier. Um, that is a named study. You do need to know who ASH is, what he did, how he did it and evaluate his study. But um, there is an element of choice in the course, in the coursework, in the course, um, because you can you'll get a question saying, explain a procedure of one study of conformity and you get to choose from any study that you've looked at. Yeah. Yeah. So you can... yeah, it's all about being selective. And that's part of the learning how to revise effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, um, I would I was... say that there's like a lot of things that we learn can be applied to different, uh, different areas of psychology as well. So, like, approach methods. Yeah. Into you build while learning others. So it seems like a lot when you look at the content, it's like, you're like, whoa, but it's not as overwhelming as it initially looks. Um, Poppy's asked, oh, there's, is there a lot of to answer that one. Um, would this course pair well with sociology? Hannah's asked, I think we've already answered that. And I think the answer is yes, wasn't it? You both know people. Yes, absolutely. And, um, common misconceptions that, that you'll get the two confused and they're very different, so, so you won't do. Uh, would it be a good idea to take bio, to take biology with uh, psychology? Um, the answer is yes. Um, because, um, there is some overlap, as Julia said, and um, so, some university courses will um, actually require uh, a science alongside psychology if you want to go on to do psychology uh, as a degree um, not all of them so biology is good to take with it but not necessary uh, and there is some good overlap um, is this an effort you have to take biology if you want to take psychology though sorry don't feel that you have to take biology if you want to take psychology no no absolutely not um, is this an essay-based subject? Yes, up to 20 marks, uh, which would be 20 minutes of writing. But uh, the essays that you'll be writing, they won't have an introduction or a conclusion. Um, you don't have to give your own opinion on the studies, if that makes sense. You just evaluate it from an objective point of view. So it's not like an English essay. No, uh, there are lots of answers that can answer questions but then there are from essay questions. You will have to do a handful of essays, but not, uh, it's not really, it doesn't dominate. Uh, does the coursework count towards no coursework? So um, uh, there's no coursework counting towards final grade, it's all exam based. Um, how does psychology differ from sociology? Ellis has asked. Um, Right. Did you say you're doing it, Brian? Yeah, I am. Um, briefly, I think sociology is more of a study of people as a whole, um, society. You do topics. You have some overlap, but in terms of, you know, you'll think that they overlap. And then I'm looking at reasons behind crime and none of the theories are the same. Um, sociology is a much wider berth and it is a considered a humanities or a political science so there isn't much overlap but they do work very well together if that makes sense in psychology, individuals. yeah in psychology you look at kind of 
well, you do look at the brain of people. It is usually in an essay you would start in psychology people do this because and in a psychology essay you would say one person might do this because if that makes sense you know just to say thank you ever so much to our fantastic students Julie and Brian uh, you've made us look very boring and you've made the course look really exciting so that's good uh, we'll carry on if there is any time. Does the um, if we have to go into lockdown again with the grade requirements change? Will you go off our predicted grades? Can't really answer that to be honest. Uh, what might happen in the future? Um, so <coughs> predicted grades are always going to be uh, taken into account, though. Uh, is psychology A level good if you want to pursue a criminology degree? Um, I would say yes because they're going to look at um, you as having some of the skills necessary to do criminology, the skills we mentioned, and it obviously just shows that you're interested in uh, human behaviour. Um, what board do you study? Uh, we study AQA. Um, would it be better to take biology? Uh, maybe I'll throw this Richard's way. Would it be better to take biology as that is a requirement for some uni courses than this, or are they interchangeable? Well, if you're aiming at the highest uh, flight of university courses, then yes, I would definitely consider taking biology. Um, there will be plenty of courses, however, available to you if you don't. So it's a case of how fixed you are on your ambition now to take psychology at degree or whatever other reason you might want to take biology for. But it's not required for some of courses. And ultimately, A-levels are difficult and uh, you need to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, I would only try the other which is really uh, are strong and like it. Um, I think we're running out of time. Thank you very much and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.